Hey folks, Steve here with another Fall of the Third Reich video. We'll be looking at turn three today. Um, and as we get started, I want to make a couple of observations, I guess. Um, in my haste to want to set up the Atlantic Wall defenses and prep for an Italian defense, maybe I should have put more units on the East Front. Um, but the other thing that I'm trying to, to determine here is... You know, the very first turn, I think, is super important for the Germans in terms of what they decide to do. Now, with the historical variant, I had to do some attacks for Zitadel. I think I was allowed to maybe do more than just the described attacks. Like, I could have attacked elsewhere around Kursk and still met the, the historical requirement, maybe, but I didn't do that. And I think there's this crunch where, like, either you can attack too much or attack too little. And maybe I attack too little. Maybe the Germans would have done better <clears throat> to do more attacks and, and hurt the Soviets' ability to have reserves and be able to push forward. And they might have been able to do that generally in more places than I even would have thought. And the Soviets would have started a little bit further behind than what they did. Um, I guess I could have also attacked too much and maybe caused too many losses for the Axis. Either way, either not doing it enough or doing it too little, I, I think I put the Germans in a tough spot. I suspect that that will carry through, through the end of the game, as like the Allies are going to probably win the game, and they will have done so because the Soviets are able to do a lot more earlier than otherwise. There's a thread on BoardGameGeek that talks about, like, there's just no way for the Axis to do anything on the Eastern Front. They get torn apart super fast. And the responses from TED and developers is mostly around, like, it, there's not an easy answer, right? There's no just perfect thing to do as the Axis. But you have to pick and choose what you do and how you do it and know when to pull back and when to counterattack or when to put the Soviets at risk. So I think, you know, if we had beaten up the Soviet line on the first turn more than we bothered to try, that would be a little more feasible. Now, it seems almost too late to even be able to hit back at them. Um, and in the present situation, we're going to have a hard enough time uh, just retreating in general. So that's probably going to have long-term consequences on the rest of the game. I'm not going to restart, I'm not going to do anything like that, but I'm just saying I think already I, that's going to be a tremendous impact to the way that this game goes. Now, um, <clears throat> some of the other things that are going to be, you know, tied up in that. Um, things will get better for the Axis as we get closer to Germany. It'll be easier to get units reinforced places. I think I am making good decisions putting these units in cities because it's really the cities that need to be defended. Based on commentary from Ted and others, um, the Soviets are really reliant on taking the cities um, and then using those cities to provide the logistical capability required to continue pushing. So, if the Axis can retain the cities or somehow break the Soviet line up enough that they can retake cities in the backfield, that's going to create circumstances where the Soviets are going to have a whole lot of a harder time bringing enough combat factors into an area to, to cause a lot of havoc, um, to do the amount of damage that we've already done so far. The really tough thing is that the Germans need to make use of the cities that they control in Russia to do their command ranges so that units can even pull back. Um, and what I'm realizing is, like, where are the cities that the Germans control on the front line anymore? Well, over here, there's really not any. Um, there's some towns, which means if we used our biggest command markers you know, we might be able to get some of these guys pulled back. Um, there are some towns over here. Smolensk is listed as a town instead of a city. Um, so we could try to do some stuff around here, but like, you know, having lost uh, Bryansk is a big deal uh, because that's a, a, an important town uh, for the Axis to make use of. Losing Orel is a big deal. Losing Kharkov is a big deal. Where you know, like, those cities, having them allows us to activate a whole lot of German units. So, like, for these units to do anything, to attack, we're having to operate them out of Gamel, and 
you know, they, they're currently not able to make use of that, really, because there's line of communication problems. Um, over here, along this line, these guys are basically operating out of Sumi, which is a town, so, like, they have to spend big on these guys to pull them back and get around Kiev, where we have a little bit more operational capability. Um, Dnipro Petrovsk is here and will help, but we're going to lose that, I think, very shortly. And then everything from there just really becomes about, like, how, how do we even, you know, survive? It, 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 if the, my observation it has any meaning to you as a viewer, I would say, if you're playing this game, the cities are super-duper important in understanding, you know, how close any of your given units are to a city is going to be hugely important. And I realize this, like, this is just playing the game, right? But in this game, the command structure of Stavka and the OKH and OKW markers, how they relate to towns and cities is so important to the game design, you really need to understand that to be successful operationally in this game. Um, and I think that's the present challenge, that the Germans need to figure out a way to, to pull the German line back to a line that is... Um, in proper alignment with cities. So what, what does that look like? Well, in the backfield, um, Talinen is a city, Riga is a city, um, Minsk is a city. So you can see there's like a line that can kind of be, you know, if you look at like the range, that's going to run like here-ish down like here. So there's a line of cities right here that we really need to pull back to if we can. If we can't do that, um, we're going to have a hard time doing any attacks, period, counterattacks or otherwise. You need the towns and cities to do a counterattack if you're going to do any at all. You need those towns and cities to pull units back out of the Soviet Zox. Um, it's so critically important. You can have guys up here that if I can't afford to send the command markers up there, they're not going to be able to move. They're just going to get surrounded and completely annihilated. And any movement I do for those guys means movement I may not be able to make down here. So I'm, I guess I'm painting a picture of like, yeah, the um, the the uh, the uh, Axis is going to have a hard time there. I don't think there's any way to get around that. Um, but I have probably not played the Axis optimally in the first two turns where they're already in really rough shape for the rest of the game. And I suspect I'm going to see the repercussions of that as we go through here. So um, that's all I'll say on that now. We'll just go ahead and get started in a turn three. So we're going to do our reinforcements. I'm just going to do those off camera, and I'll talk a little bit about where those guys ended up. Okay, so uh, let's talk very quickly about those reinforcements. The Soviets did not get any. Uh, the Americans got two units that go to the England box, so we just have more stuff piling up in the England box. Not able to do much with it. Um, the thing about it is, due to the, I guess if I play with the weather optional rules and other issues having to do with the English Channel, like the historical landing of D-Day is on turn six, we're probably going to aim to do D-Day on turn six. I, I, to me, it's, this is probably how this is going to end up going. Um with the restrictions and all of that. So a bunch of units are showing up in England with nothing to do, nowhere to go. Uh, in the Mediterranean box, we did get the uh, Commonwealth Beachhead marker that we lost on turn one. That came back this turn, and I put back into the Mediterranean box because it does have an M on it. I just figure, good enough. We also got a French, what, mechanized mountaineer unit, I guess is what that would be. It is blue, if you can't tell due to the wonkiness of my camera, and it shows up in the Mediterranean theater. So this is really the first you know, reinforcement that the U.S. faction can use because U.S. and French units are considered you know, together uh, from a command perspective. They can operate with the Americans. Uh, those are reinforcements that are much appreciated as the U.S. has been trying to hold on to uh, their spot on Italy. So that's some goodness. Uh, the Axis received some infantry corps, um, all of which have been designated to go either here or here. Uh, they're going to go to the east front. I think 
the, the Germans really need to spend the majority of their stuff now uh, going to the east front. They have their Atlantic Wall about as set up as they're going to be. Um, I think that's the reality we need to operate in. So that's what we've got to do. Um, okay, so what else? Um, then we have the strategic air phase, which I've already done. This was very easy. Uh, basically, the Axis did the same as they did before. They have one uh, Luftwaffe in home defense. They have one in the Med. They have one in the East. That's, that's good. Uh, the Allies put their one bomber command uh, on factory bombing, same as last turn. So everything's straightforward. We had rebuilt the bomber command after they were eliminated by the Luftwaffe. They are rebuilt. They will go again. Um, which gets us right into the replacement phase right away, moving pretty quick, where we're going to have Allied factory bombardment. So we're going to roll a die for that. Um, basically, this is going to be the same uh, die roll. It's just a die roll minus four because it's 1943 still, the last turn of 1943, I should say, um, where there is a minus four to that die roll. So we will roll minus four, see what we get. I rolled a six. Um, so you can see there, rolled a six. So minus four is a two. Uh, what is a two? Subtract that number of German replacement points. Eliminate Luftwaffe home defense at end of segment. Okay. Um, so that's the first time that that has ever happened. And um, there's going to be something I think we have to do uh, where if we eliminate that unit... Um, Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. We, we succeeded, which is much better than last time. The home defense Luftwaffe is eliminated, <clears throat> and we have to move one of the other Luftwaffe counters to the home front from somewhere else. So we have to decide where do we want to give up our air cover. Um, I don't like either option, but I think it makes sense to take it off the med because the eastern front is in rough shape. We need to keep that defense going. Um, but we are going to have two German replacement points subtracted from their total, which is going to be um, important because that's the next step of the turn uh, and obviously is, is going to matter here. Um, so, okay, so then we're going to do... Uh, we're not going to do any interdiction bombardments. We just get into the replacement phase. So, uh, German... Replacements are going to be two per factory, um, so we have four factories, uh, two times four is it's eight, um, but we're going to have to subtract two from that, um, I read this right, so, yeah, from the German replacement points, not the axis minor, so eight minus two is six, so very importantly, the Germans are only going to get six uh, replacement points. Now, um, in terms of the minor replacement points, we do have an, el an eliminated uh, Italian. So um, I believe that with the two uh, replacement points for minors, they can very simply rebuild. So um, I think for the Italians, what that is going to mean, as soon as I find the rule, unfortunately, um, darn it. There we go. Any town or city in their home country with a line of communication with supply germ factory heads. Okay, so I think the Italians are going to put their unit in Syracuse, because I believe that's considered a home country city. So they are adding strength to the Syracuse hex, that's going to make it harder. Uh, for the allies to land in Syracuse, which is their next place that they probably would like to go. Um, so there you go. Um, that leaves six replacement points for the Axis. And here's the really difficult decision. Um, we've lost a Luftwaffe unit, which leaves us with two. If we lose another one, then we only have one. <laughs> and if we lose that one, we'll have none. And it's really hard 
to try to get these guys back. So what's the deal, right? Like, do we bother... Uh, it, it hurts, because we're not only just losing the two, we're losing two replacement points to have to rebuild the unit that we lost. So if we do that, if we decide to rebuild the Luftwaffe, that means we'll get another Luftwaffe counter that we would be able to use. Um, but <laughs> but the problem is going to be that um, we're only going to have four at that point. And we're only going to be able to spend 50% on armored replacements. So this is what's this is the really tough thing. However, which way we go, we're we're hurt. Um, and I, this is a really the first tough decision as the Germans we really have strategically. Um, and we only have the six points to use. Uh, man. And only three of those can be used on armor units. I think this turn will rebuild the Luftwaffe, but I don't think we can afford to do it again after this. So we'll spend two, we'll get another Luftwaffe counter. I don't think I can assign it anywhere once it's built. Um, the rules I don't think are very clear on this. Um, Yeah, it doesn't say where the Luftwaffe counters go. Um, so I'm just going to assume that we build it and it's in the home box, but not usable is, is my guess. So we are going to spend two there, and then we're going to have four left, three of which can be armor, you know, mechanized replacements. And I think we try to do that as much as we can. Um, say one, two, three, four. So that gets us a two-step B armor unit, a one-step C armor unit, and a C infantry unit. And... Um, as it stands, I think we try to put these guys um, as far as we can really get them uh, on the east front. <laughs> I think that, that's as best as they can do. Um, okay, replacement, Axis replacement is done. We have the Allied replacement. The Allies are just going to get their full uh, assortment. So the British are going to get Four, um, I think they're going to rebuild their paratrooper. Um, they're going to fill up one of their damaged mech core that's in supply. And that's all they can really spend theirs on. The U.S. French get six. They don't have a whole lot to spend it on. They're going to replenish a unit. They're going to put uh, another unit... Uh, that was eliminated into the available box as well as their paratroopers. Now, <coughs> um, Allied reinforcements can be placed in the England or Med box. Um, newly arriving Allied reinforcements in England may be stacked in a beachhead. Okay. Um, I guess we can't do that in the Med. Okay, so I guess what we would do is we would have had the French reinforcement come in on the beachhead marker, and then, um, let's see. I was double checking the placement rules. Okay. So I think I could actually have these units come in 
the rebuilt unit and the French unit come in on the beachhead marker of the US and I will go ahead and do that down here. I believe that's legal and we replenish this unit. So um, at least for the Western Allies, all their replacement points, they had more replacement points than they really needed um, and they're good to go. So they have more goodness for the Allies. The Soviets have 10 replacement points and let's see, with their single step units across the board, they might just be able to build everything back. Everything but one. So, um, if I just look at this, Soviet step, doesn't matter what kind of step, it's one more replacement point. So, yeah, there are nine steps in the eliminated pool as the Soviets. Um, we're going to build them all back except for one infantry. And once again, so, like, this is the first time the Soviets have more losses than they can replace, but the Axis are really still in much, much worse shape. Um, for the, for that kind of thing. Um, so let's see. I think we're going to have these guys... We're going to put a bunch of armor reinforced into Kharkov. Um, we're going to put some infantry... Uh, hmm. In... Belgorod and Orel. Maybe one in Brzev. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna move this around a little bit. There we go. Okay. It's kind of weird, I, you know, doing these reinforcements, I'm having to think the same way for the Soviets, like, okay, if I put these reinforcements, you know, up here, here, and here, I have to make sure that I'm actually going to make use of them with my command markers after movement so that they can attack. You know, I'm sending them where they're going, but is where they're going going to be useful? Um, and in fact, I'm going to make another slight adjustment because I need to get some more guys up in Leningrad. So, there we go. Okay, so, um, good stuff. Uh, replacements are done, and now we have our allied invasion phase. So here's the question. Are we going to invade Syracuse? I think it makes sense to try. Um, And it, and it does make me wonder, is it, it had, was it any value to put another unit in this hex or not? Based on the way that you calculate this stuff. But I think we're gonna, we gotta try, because if, if we take Syracuse, we're going to guarantee that the Axis is going to have the Italians surrender. Unless they somehow take Gala, and I don't think that's going to happen. So, if we take Syracuse, that'll force the Axis to have to pull back to the defensive line up here, because anything else would be untenable. Um, and we eliminate all those Italian units, so it just it just puts a lot more strain on the axis. So I think we got to try it. So we're going to place our beachhead marker in the Commonwealth, Commonwealth beachhead marker in the Commonwealth space. We're going to send uh, our mechanized units, and we're going to send paratrooper. So this is as good of a tent as we can reasonably make it. And what are our modifiers? Well, we have, um, let's see, it's, it is considered swamp. That's minus one. Uh, it is a city, but that doesn't matter for invasions. Oh, city port. Yes, it does. So that's a minus two. Then we have mechanized. So that's a minus four here. but we do have allied air range and we do have a paratrooper. So it comes out to be a minus one to the die roll. So we won't get an overwhelming success. The mechanized unit being there uh, and the terrain make it so that we're just not gonna get an overwhelming success. But we can get a normal success, which would be, I think, just fine and dandy for what the allies wanna do. Um, so we will do it, we'll, we'll give it a roll. So we got, again, paratroopers and the allied air trace that gives us a plus three. But the swamp is minus, uh, 
minus one, the city port is minus one, and the mechanized unit is another minus two. So it all ends up being die roll minus one. So here we go, rolling the die. Oh my god. Okay, well that's another failed invasion uh, on the part of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth apparently not being very good at these sorts of invasions. Go figure. Okay. Uh, paratrooper is eliminated. Reduce all invading unit uh, units and return them to the theater box. Alright, they're reduced in the theater box. Place a piece head marker. Two turns from the current turn. That kicks them out to turn five, which is going to be... We're going to be way behind schedule um, as it happens. And the German units are A-OK -okay there. Oh, what a disaster. Um, man, if the Axis win this game, it's gonna they're going to lose on the East Front really bad, but the Western Allies are going to be behind the times. Um, and we're going to be able to make use of the Italian units to basically keep the Balkans from falling and maybe Greece from falling, and they'll never get the Roman or Milan victory victory point hexes at this rate. I mean, it's going to be very late. So we're already... For the Axis, this is all good news. Very good news. For the Allies, it sucks. Um, okay. That is the Allied invasion phase. That's all we got, and that's a bummer. Um, now we have the OKW, OKH phase. We need to decide um, where and how... Uh, we want to operate from here. Um, I think the real question is going to be, like, do we expect anything to happen down here? And do we care? Um, they're certainly going to try to attack this hex, and it's going to be two to one and some stuff. So do we want to pull back? I'm not sure it makes sense to pull back. Um... <clears throat> I think there's some leeway here that we could move some stuff around. So I, I'm i not going to spend any points on the west front OKW. I think I can do that. I think I can say I'm not going to spend any. I'm going to do all seven on the east front. We need it. We need it on the east front, I think. Um, <coughs> I don't think there's any issue with doing it that way. So we would have seven points to do whatever we wanted with, and that would be either a three and a four, or a one and a two and a four, some other mixture of those things. Or a, yeah, one, two, and a four might be the most flexible setup there. Um, and real quick, I need to look. If we're playing with weather, that would also influence what we decide to do here. Um, and let's say I am playing with weather. Uh, so, for some reason, turn three is not considered a winter turn in the optional rules, so I guess that doesn't matter. But yeah, there you go. So, um, the Axis is going to spend all their points on OKH, and we're going to go ahead and place those. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll place those markers, I'll do the Axis operational movement segment, and any Axis combats, and when we come back, we'll kind of see what the situation is. And it's really going to be all East Front related. Okay, so I am done with the Axis movement. On the west uh, front, I just kind of shuffled some units around, um, getting coverage on the beaches. I managed to get some German units into the forts in the center of Italy, so that's kind of looking pretty good. But on the east front, boy, we've got some problems. So here's the thing. Um, being in range of an OKH marker allows an infantry unit to disengage from an enemy Zoc. That, that is fine, right? That would work. Um, Non-mechanizing is my only exit in an enemy Zoc if one of the things is true. Um, the way it, it essentially works out, just to summarize, is like, I, I put the OKH markers up here, over here, down here, to try to create some circumstances where units could pull back or they could do something to kind of help cover the way. Um, the, re the reality is that um, 
I think down here it's not going to do us any good. I think I need to do this and have these guys pull back um, a straight. Okay. Okay. So one, two, three, four. is start to pull these guys back and try to save them, if I can. Um, but everywhere else, the, the trick is, even though units that are within range of that command can disengage and pull back, you still have to follow the rules of Zox. So there are some cases, like right up here, where I can't <clears throat> pull those units back um, because I don't have a friendly unit there to remain in the hex to negate an enemy Zoc, and I can't move from an enemy Zoc hex to an enemy Zoc hex. That's, that's my understanding. Um, so I would need to move to a hex that doesn't have an enemy Zoc and then go somewhere else. So, so this area over here where these guys are kind of locked up, I can't save them. It's too late. They, they can't be saved. Same thing, like these guys, um, basically, I guess I could, in theory, move these guys, uh, but they can't move from a Zoc to a Zoc. So what I could do is I can move this guy like this, because this guy's remaining in the hex, and... Um, well, I guess, yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, no, I can't even do that, because he's stuck in the Zox. I can't move him. Um, so some of these guys are just effed. I mean, I can't, I can't figure out a way to save them, because even a friendly unit doesn't negate the Zox for purposes of movement. It only negates it uh, if you're moving from that hex to a non zoc hex. But we're going from in a zoc to in a zoc, which is not allowed. So this guy can't, those guys can't do anything. They're, they're screwed. Um, some of these same situations uh, are occurring over here, so I could pull back a little bit there. You can see I'm trying to form some kind of new line as I pull back. Um, but I can't pull back so far that I leave a huge gap in the line either that Soviet armor could exploit. So you can see, I mean, things are just really bad everywhere. Um, I'm trying to pull these guys out of Crimea to save them. The victory points don't matter as much. I mean, the, they're victory points that the, the Soviets have to go get. The Axis, we can leave them behind. It's not that big a deal. Um, like, we gave up a victory hex up here. But, you know, we at least we're able to shorten our line because the lake helps protect us. Um, so we're sort of splitting up a little bit. That allows us to have something of a line over here. We ought to be able to get some units moved, you know, up the way. <clears throat> um, and in fact, I'm... De well, yeah, it's too late. Um, I probably placed some units in terms of reinforcements in some dumb places where with the armor high movement range, I could probably get to better locations in the south and the north. So I sort of effed up a little bit. But, oh well. Um, so there you go. Uh, the Axis isn't doing any combat. Uh, the, n nowhere, I don't think, it. I, I'm not sure it makes sense anywhere to do combats. And they, they would have to be in range of OKH. And uh, I just, I don't know. Um, not enough, I don't think, to have made a difference. Um, Trying to see here. I mean, I guess it, you know we could have maybe maybe tried to do some attack against these guys, and then that would help alleviate some supply concerns potentially. Um. But if we failed and we took too many losses, then that would exacerbate the problem. So I guess this is good enough. I feel like <clears throat> I may be failing the game a little bit and failing for you guys because I'm not playing the Axis very smart on the East Front, I feel like. I, 
I could maybe be doing better. Um, and it's almost too late to fix a lot of the problems that are going on. But that's just a part of the situation, I guess. It is what it is. <coughs> okay, so, what else? Um, well, we have the Allied-Soviet reaction segment. So I think for the Allies, um, I think what they're going to do is they're going to do uh, some movement, and they're going to move the American units over here. Uh, so these guys move from here to here, and we have an attack that we could try to conduct um, against this combined stack over here. So what does that look like? Well, um, we'd have 14 attacking uh, something, um, either 5, or I guess the rough adds 1, so it's going to be 3... Neither, so it'll be six or seven or nine. So it'd be a, a real tight thing, but I think we need to try. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and attack there with reaction combat. Try to blow open something so we can threaten Syracuse. That's I think the key. So we'll try <clears throat> we'll try to do that. Um, so rolling a die for the German unit. The uh, there is no Luftwaffe, so it doesn't matter. I rolled a five. Um, which gives the maximum amount of combat strength. So that's nine combat factors defending, 14 attacking. Um, that puts us at uh, a plus five differential column die roll. And I do not believe we have any other modifiers here. So just straight up die roll. And we roll the two, which is bad, very bad. Attacker chooses equal number of steps to eliminate from both sides, but may not eliminate every attacking step. Oh, that's actually pretty good. That, that might be useful, but there's no advance, so... Okay, so if there's one, two... Th okay, one, two, three steps here, we could eliminate one, two... Three... One, two, three steps... Make sure I'm reading this right. It's an AA result. Attacker attrition. Attacker chooses equal number of steps to eliminate from both sides, but may not eliminate every attacking step. So if we say we're going to eliminate three steps, we're going to lose this guy, the uh, blue French unit flips, that's three steps eliminated, and that eliminates these guys. We can't advance, but I believe that nullifies the... You know, that not a big deal, because now we've just hurt the uh, axis quite a bit. So that's good. That is that is good for, for their sake, that's for sure. Um, so now, uh, the Soviet reaction, and to be honest, I'm not really sure what we want to do. Um, I think it's hard to activate guys down here. So maybe what we do is we we just we use this opportunity <coughs> excuse me we use this opportunity to get because it's reaction we're either going to collect guys or we're going to like bring people together in one place or we're going to separate them I don't think there's any place that like separating units is going to do us a whole lot of good I do like the idea well, okay. Knowing the limited nature of this, I think we are going to try to make something happen over here and just kind of help the situation. So we're going to pick this hex to concentrate. We're going to have this guy move through here. We gain control of uh, Novorossiysk, And <clears throat> these three units are going to end their movement here. Um, are they going to try to attack uh, across the straight? I forget what that does for combat. Um, a straight is a plus two defense factor. So that would make this a 5, so it would be 6 to 5, and it looks like that's a clear hex in the town. So 6 to 5 is a differential of 1. Um, that could go very badly for us. So, I don't know, is it worth attacking or not? Um, 
we roll very well, it's like a 50-50 chance. Like, it's a 50-50 chance any which way I look at it. Um, so let's try it. We'll, we'll do it. All right, I rolled a four, which is, which is a good roll. It's an AA. Attacker chooses equal number of steps to eliminate from both sides, but can't advance. So we're going to eliminate this Romanian cavalry. Uh, we're going to eliminate one of our infantry, but then we can't advance into the town. So we don't take the other side of the strait, um, but that surely helps. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it down here is just, it, again, it's really hard to, you know, until we took that city, it's tough to activate down here, but now that we do, we can sort of create some problems. The thing is, the Axis will continue to remain supplied, I think, out of Sevastopol, uh, due to it being an Axis port. I think they can get supply there. So we can't just, like, take here and sort of cut off the peninsula and say, like, oh, you're, you're done, you're going to attrit away. I don't think they attrit away. So we need to be applying some pressure there. And I think everything else going on up here, we won't... You know, we don't need the extra, extra activation. I think we have enough ac activations that we should be able to operate well enough in this area, I hope. Okay, so Soviet reaction is done. Um, Soviet attrition. So, uh, units that are out of supply are eliminated, and I think we've got some that are that way, uh, unfortunately, for them. And there really was just no way, like, I've either got to sacrifice some guys and have them survive, or try to hold hold the door open and have those guys get eliminated anyway. Um, let's see. All out of supply units are eliminated. Okay, so this is going to be the first real situation where we're going to have a lot of trouble. Um, this guy in Tagner, Tagenrog is actually in supply, so he can count this way. Um, this guy is out of supply, so he's toast. This is what I mean, like, I feel like it, you know, I'm in such bad shape that it almost doesn't even matter what happens. Like, I think these guys are toast because they have, um, let me just make sure I'm, yeah, it, I think these guys in Dnipropetrovsk are toast because they don't, they can't trace supply out. Um, I guess they could go one two, three, four, no, okay, they are in supply, they are in supply, they can cross through here, one, one, two, three, four, to Krivoy Rog, and then they're in supply, so they're okay, um, in supply, in supply, in supply, he's in supply, these guys are not in supply, and I think they just go poof, because they've got Zox, and they can't get out of here, so that's a two-step armor unit gone, and an infantry gone. And I don't think there's anything I could have done about that. Um, these guys, one, one, two, three, four. I don't think we can use Smolensk. Um, yeah, up here. I don't think I can use Smolensk as a uh, as a line of communication because there's a Zoc into that hex. These guys are in supply because we can count from Mogilev one, two, three, four, but not five. So this guy is out of supply in his toast. I probably should have stuck a unit in Smolensk, I guess. That would have kept that from happening. Uh, these guys are in supply because they can go one, two, three to Vitebsk, in supply, in supply. Um, technically they can... I guess I should move this guy here instead, so... One, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. Okay. And these guys are all in supply then. Um, so yeah, we lost a few units to attrition. I, I don't think there's any way I can get around that. Um, everyone else is okay, but I mean, they're just, we didn't have a lot of options. Stuff's falling apart as the axis are. Um, okay, so that's the attrition phase. Then we have exploitation movement. So... Um, Our mechanized units have to start in the range of our OKW, OKH markers. I'm not sure how many are actually in range anymore. That's the one problem I should have thought about more. Um, 
so he could move, but there's nowhere to go. And yeah, we actually can't really do much of any um, exploitation movement. Not that there's a whole lot we would have done anyway, but there you go. Um, so okay, uh, we'll take this off because it's the cleanup phase, and we're gonna get to the. Uh, oh, sorry, there you go. That's the end of the Axis part of the turn, effectively. So now we're going to go to the Allied Soviet action step uh, for the rest of our activity. We'll probably start looking over here in the West first to see what can be done about Sicily, given the present situation. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, let me put a break here, and I'll figure out what all they're going to do. Okay, looking at the Western Allies, I, this is a bit risky, but we need to do something risky or else we're going to fall apart in the game. Um, we moved out of Gala. That's safe, because even if the Axis moves to here, or like, they can't get here to cut off the supply line of the Allies because they can't move from Zok to Zok. So these guys um, are kind of stuck where they are. They can't move down to this hex, even if they wanted to. So we can move here. We can attack Syracuse. This unit is currently, um, well, he's not even projecting a Zoc because he's a division. So we could, you know, move up here if we wanted to, but that would be bad. We need, this is the best hex for us to sit in. So we can move here. We can attack. Now, he's going to be out of supply because this is not an access port. He can't trace supply past us. Um, and uh, if I look, I just want to make sure I'm getting this stuff right in terms of the supply rules. Um, yeah, that he would he's out of supply. Um, so half of three is 1.5 rounded up to two. He gets a defensive factor for being in a marsh swamp. He gets one for the city port. So he's four combat strength. We're attacking with five, which is risky, right? We only get the plus one um, differential. But we have three steps. So the thinking is, if we can at least get in a trit, he's a two-step unit. If we get down to one, um, like we'll still actually be able to enter Syracuse. Uh, and, well... It, it's going to depend on the die roll, I guess. This is this is pretty risky. I mean, uh, there's no there's no way to, to no way to look any other way at it. Um, and there's nothing else that I can do that really help help us. Um, so this could be very bad. <laughs> um, this could be very bad. It could be. But we need to do something, because if we don't, we're going to be in deep trouble. Um, there's one other thing that I could try to do. To help the situation. Um, I could see what to do about the U.S. paratrooper. So I could move this paratrooper to Gala and ensure that no matter what, we're not going to have our, well, hmm. I think we could airdrop these guys into this hex and then have them attack. That would give us a little bit more of a differential. So that would give us 7 to 4. That would be a plus 3 differential. That is better. Um, 
that gets us out of the potential elimination thing. Um, and we could leave more guys behind. So I think we can do that. Um, uh, we can, yeah, drop, can move, in, in the operational setting, can move to any hex on the map within four hexes of a supplied ally unit. Um, we can't go into forest, mountain, alpine cities, or hexes containing enemy forts, but that's not a mountain that is rough. Or is that mountain? I guess that could be considered mountain. Uh, see, this is the map terrain is what kills me here, guys. So maybe we can't use the... Ah, man, okay. The, this is good. The tough decisions are what make this good, right? Um, do we attack? If we take Syracuse, that gives us what we need, but we run the risk of losing everything, <laughs> basically. Um, if we get a retreat result, that would be what we need. We'd need to roll a six. I think, I think we don't attack. Actually, I, I, it, it was. I was thinking this would be a good move. Um, if we had not lost so many units before, I could see where it would be useful. Um, but I just don't see how that helps us now um, at the moment. Yeah. It sucks because this would, you know, this would have been a really great chance. Now we're still putting them out of supply, so the the Germans have to react to that. But um, that's all really. Ugh, that sucks. I, I wanted to do more, but it's just so it's too risky. That's the reality. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the that's the reality. Um, that's all we could do. So we move to put that guy out of supply, um, and that's all. That's all she wrote. That's all we can do. The only other thing we could maybe do is because that guy still projects a a, a zoc. We could move like that, and then that would just make it really difficult um, <clears throat> for uh, the axis to do anything to save this guy. Um, this guy still pro projects a Zoc, so these guys can't just move in. This guy could try to come in and attack, um, but it would be pretty bloody for him and would simply make it easier for us to beat him, I think. So, let's see, if he rolled, if he rolled a maximum strength, he'd be four attacking two in the mountain, which gives two, so it would be zero, zero. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's anything that the Axis could do to really stop this from working. Um, at most, he would have a plus two, and... Uh, I don't know. Um, all right. I've now wasted many minutes of your time. I apologize. We're just going to leave that like that. If the Axis wants to try to do something about it, they can They can try, um, but they're going to have problems doing much more than that. So, okay. Um, that's it for the Western Allies movement um, for combat. You know, they could try to attack these Italians... The Italians would have 7, they'd be attacking with 15, Let's see, yeah, it's a rough hex, one combat factor, so 4, 5, 8, no, they would have 8 here, 15 to 8, it is not 2 to 1, so we would have plus 6, we could force a retreat, but we probably don't want to do that. No, I think we're good here. I, I, that's as good as it's going to get. Um, now I'll do the Soviets. Okay, I just want to show kind of where we're at with uh, movement. Uh, where I placed Stavka, it's because I could use all four markers. I have one down, uh, one down here on the town side, 
Um, this just enables us to continue to do our, our attack in Crimea. We have one, uh, the four marker in Kharkov, which gets like everybody up here. Uh, we put the three marker, which becomes six, in a rel for the city to get up here. And then we have, um, uh, whoops, the two up to a four in Leningrad uh, so that we can continue a northern attack. I'm sort of sacrificing my ability to do a lot more stuff over here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but that's okay. Um, well, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think this is what works best. We're, we're sacrificing some ability to attack through here, but that's okay. I think we need to kind of push through this way and that will enable us to get to areas like Minsk, which will not matter as much. I mean, we're really close to being able to sneak back there and get Minsk anyway and cause a bunch of backfield problems. So I think that's good enough. I just wanted to show again that we're, we're, we're sliding through. We're mo moving where we can. We're, we're respecting the Zox, but um, we're pushing. We're able to, because we control enough cities, that we can make use of almost every Stavka marker in city mode which allows us to activate just a whole lot more units, and that gets back to that importance of cities. You know, down here, we have no choice, we have a town, but um, it, you know, that's all we needed anyway, but everywhere else, we just want to be activating a lot of units, and I could <coughs> very easily see a situation here where we're going to cause a general collapse the entire way down the line. We might destroy the entire German army at this rate, I'm not sure. So I'm going to go do those combats, and we'll come back and see the utter destruction that has been uh, conducted here. Okay, here we are after combats, and yeah, things are looking pretty bad uh, for the Axis. We've cleared a lot of units. Uh, we took Dnipropetrovsk, uh, so that gives us another victory point, and we've, in the south, I mean, it's a bloodbath. Um, and really, <laughs> I I don't even know what's going to happen now. I mean, it just feels like the, the Axis is really effed on the eastern front. Um, but that's as much as they could really do. I, I think they're wanting to hold there as it stands. Um, uh, it's, it's really quite good for the Soviets there. Um, they crushed a lot of units, and it's going to keep occurring as we go. Um, so now the real question is, what is the act is going to do to react? Um, well, in the West, uh, I don't, I don't know that there's really much that can be done. Um, I guess what could happen is we reestablish a supply line to Syracuse, and then that's it, I guess. Um, and then in the East, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure what can be done to salvage this situation, to be honest. Um, we can maybe try to get some guys over here, but they're probably going to get crushed. Um, whoops. Sorry about the camera. Um, there's almost nothing that can be done in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know how to salvage this situation. Um, maybe what could be done is one, two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, um, I did OKH reaction, and I'm just trying to save some armor units. That's, I think, the best we can do. We, we are just effed. We're just effed in so many ways. I don't know how to stand up to the Soviets on the Eastern Front at the moment. We're basically going to have to just figure out where the new line is going to be and try to put units into those new places and hope for the best. I, I don't think we can save very many people. So, I, again, I'm going to chalk this up. You know, the Western Front is just slowed down due to, due to luck. The axis is falling apart on the Eastern Front due to my incompetence, I would say, is probably what we're looking at here. Um, okay, so then the Allies and Soviets have attrition. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody 
is in supply that would need to count for supply. So then we're going to do the exploitation. Um, I don't think we really have any opportunities of movement in Sicily for the Western Allies. There's enough, um, there's enough blockage due to some Zocs that the Allies can't do much more, which is fine. Um, so then it becomes exploitation for the Soviets. Um, so you have to imagine they have to be in range of a Stomfka marker, which that might be the real challenge. Um, to start with, but then they're going to surge forward. Um, I'm not sure there's going to be much that can be done. I mean, the only thing that can slow them down is the movement costs of some of these hexes. We're going to start getting in a rougher terrain. So let me see what can be done as the Soviets for exploitation movement. Okay, so that wasn't as dramatic of an exploitation as you might think, and a lot of that has to do with the uh, fact that what we don't want to do is provide too much opportunity um, to have spoiling movement done on the Axis side. So you can just see, like, we're cutting these guys off. They're going to go poof. Um, we're kind of surrounding, moving forward. We couldn't move a whole lot up here due to the Stavka reach. But, like, here, we're just simply, I mean, we're moving past guys. We're taking control of areas... Um, and we're, we're overall just making it very difficult for the Axis to do much of anything um, moving forward. So I think that was pretty good in terms of exploitation movement. Maybe not the best. Um, okay, and then we have transit. Um, so the Axis has to do four units in each theater. Um, I think... I, again, maybe made a mistake in where I put all my guys. Um, so I think we're going to put somebody in Minsk. I think we're gonna... Sorry, my camera keeps screwing up. So we got somebody put in Minsk. We got somebody in Vinitsa. We're going to put um, somebody in Odessa. And then, so that's three. We get one more. Um, Oh, I guess I forgot to do regular movements. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. I think we can do that. There, you can start to see, after transit movement, and I forgot to move some guys during regular movement, so that was my bad. I just corrected that too late. i gotta, I got to fix the problem. I don't think it would have changed much. But you can see, like, I'm trying to get something together so that at least I have something in the way um, before things get too gnarly. Now, it would be interesting. I should take a look, you know, next turn at the board position and see where the front lines were at this point in history, it'd be interesting to see kind of where we compare. Though I'll say, you know, again, the Germans are in such rough shape, I don't know what they're going to be able to do other than to do a general fallback everywhere that they can at this rate. Um, so, yeah, there's that. There's your uh, access to strategic transit and allies. Um, uh, I think we put the Polish unit in a beachhead, and that's it for the time being. <laughs> or, well, I guess... Oh, I guess we can't do that. I forgot. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the Allies can't do a whole lot themselves at the moment, so that's as much as I guess they can do. Um, I suppose I could move... The, I don't know, I can't really do that either. I uh, can't keep screwing up. So, yeah, allies, strategic movement, done. Soviets, I'm not sure they have much that they really could strategic move anywhere. I mean, there's just not a lot of 
options um, as it stands, so I think we're probably fine. So that's it, I think, for turn three, guys. Um, sorry this was a little bit of a disjointed exercise, um, just trying to figure out how to operate right now, but the Western Allies just can't get into Italy. <laughs> I mean, they are, but it's so slow, it's bizarre. Um, they just, the, the Commonwealth keeps rolling bad on invasions. Um, in terms of a victory point check, just so we're all clear, we've got, uh, I think it's one, two, I want to say three, where have I captured, oh right, okay, so we have the hex south of Leningrad, that's one victory hex, Dnipropetrovsk is two, and then I thought we picked up another one, or maybe we didn't, um, Oh, yeah, Kharkov. Okay, so that's three victory points for the Allies, all from the Soviets at the moment. They still need a lot more. But there you go. Okay, uh, victory check done. Cleanup uh, is pulling the Stavka markers off. The important thing is the Stavka is not limited to seven points or whatever. They can use all four markers, which maybe that is the one thing. If you had to balance the game, you could try to say should be done is that the Stavka should only get seven points worth instead of all four, which is functionally ten. Um, so I guess, you know, I don't know. Maybe that could be an optional rule if this is just so powerful and it feels like it. But again, I'll have to look online and see, like, where was the front line as we got into 1944? Um, and I'm trying to recall back to the Bagration uh, situation, and I think that was in, I, I want to say, 44, and the Soviets were, like, over here, so maybe we're still, you know, maybe we're still in line with history, but I think the manpower of the Germans is just getting shattered. I mean, if you look at the dead pile, it's, uh, it's pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. It's hard to come back from that, um, especially once the Allied bombing campaign picks up. We're really going to have a hard time keeping everything steady. <coughs> okay. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. Turn three is over. Next turn, we will be in 1944, uh, and we'll see how it goes. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Keep gaming.